Hi everyone. Welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilopathology.com. In my earlier sessions, I had discussed about the various cellular adaptations, right? The atrophy, hypertrophy, and hyperplasia. In this session, let's learn a very important cellular adaptation, which is metaplasia. In the next 10 to 15 minutes, we will learn what metaplasia is. We will see why this metaplasia occurs. And we will understand this by giving some common examples of metaplasia. And finally, we will state its clinical importance. Now, what is metaplasia? Metaplasia, by definition, it is a reversible change. Remember, all cellular adaptations are reversible change. So, metaplasia is also a reversible change in which one differentiated cell type is replaced by another cell type. Okay, make sure that you mention this differentiated cell type. Okay, this differentiated cell type can be either epithelial cell or a mesenchymal cell. You know what epithelial cells means, right? Epithelial can be squamous epithelium or a columnar epithelium like that. Mesenchymal can be in the form of muscle, bones and cartilage and so on, right? So, basically metaplasia is a reversible change in which one differentiated cell type is replaced by another cell type. Now, the, the main mechanism for metaplasia is reprogramming of the precursor cells, which is present in our normal tissues. It's not that, you know, the squamous cell you know, suddenly gets transformed into a columnar cell or vice versa. It's actually that particular cell because of stress, it might die and then the precursor cells are reprogrammed for conversion into a better cell, right? So, it's basically because of reprogramming. Now, what do we mean by reprogramming? Reprogramming meaning it is a process by which the cells change their gene expression patterns and they differentiate into a different cell type, okay? So, this is the underlying mechanism of metaplasia. Now, metaplasia can be broadly categorized into epithelial metaplasia and mesenchymal metaplasia. Under epithelial metaplasia, we have two subcategories, which is common ones are the squamous metaplasia and second one is columnar metaplasia. Mesenchymal metaplasia, the examples are osseous metaplasia and cartilaginous metaplasia. Now, remember, when I say squamous metaplasia, you should always Understand that the end result is conversion into squamous epithelium. Okay. Similarly, if it is columnar metaplasia, irrespective of what type of cell it was earlier, it finally changes to columnar epithelium. Similarly, osseous metaplasia, whatever the tissue it may be, the final change will be the bone formation. Right. So, let us see some examples of each of these. Squamous metaplasia, the common, you know, uh, Tissues or organs involved are the bronchus, uterine cervix, gallbladder, renal pelvis. These are the common examples. Bronchus, you all know it is lined by pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium. Uterine cervix, particularly the endocervix is lined by the columnar epithelium. Gallbladder lined by simple columnar epithelium. And renal pelvis, you all know it is lined by transitional epithelium. All these lining epithelium, so this one is one is columnar, one is pseudostratified ciliated columnar, one is transitional. Ultimately, because of irritation, they convert, the epithelium is replaced by squamous epithelium. So, that's why it's called squamous metaplasia of bronchus, cervical squamous metaplasia, squamous metaplasia of gallbladder and so on. Columnar metaplasia, the example includes Barrett's esophagus, where the lower end of the esophagus, which is normally lined by stratified squamous epithelium that gets replaced by the columnar epithelium of the intestinal type. Then you have another example being healed gastricles. So we will understand this as I show the illustrations. Osseous metaplasia, the examples include osseous metaplasia involving the arterial wall, myositis ossificans, the stroma of certain tumors, cartilage of larynx in elderly individuals. Now, cartilaginous metaplasia where the end result is conversion into a cartilage, right? So, healing of fractures, 
is an example of cartilaginous metaplasia. Now let us learn or let us understand one by one. Okay, few of the few of these metaplasias I will try to explain. Let us talk about bronchus first. We know that bronchus is lined by pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium. Now, what happens when there is chronic irritation to the bronchi, bronchial epithelium? Okay, like for example, cigarette smokes, smoke that can induce the change in the bronchial epithelium, which transforms the normal columnar ciliated cells into squamous cells. Okay, because the squamous cell is more resistant to smoke. But you know, ultimately, it loses its ability to clear mucus. Ultimately, this can lead to respiratory problems. But for time being, you no, know, it gets converted to a more resistant epithelium, like that of squamous epithelium. So that's the illustration showing this is a normal ciliated columnar epithelium, pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium, and ultimately, which is being replaced by this squamous epithelium. Okay, what has happened here is the reprogramming of the precursor cells. Precursor cells somewhere it would be here. So these precursor cells would be reprogrammed to differentiate into squamous cells. They no longer differentiate into normal columnar epithelium. Okay, pseudostratified columnar epithelium because they want some cells which should be more resistant. Right. So this is your underlying mechanism. Coming to the example of uterine cervix. See what has happened here is because of infections, because of irritations, because of hormonal changes, the glandular epithelium of the endocervix it gets changed, converted to a squamous epithelium. That's called squamous metaplasia of the cervix. The gallbladder. The gallbladder we know it's lined by columnar, simple columnar epithelium. So when some when in, when individuals have gallstones and these gallstones, you know, they can irritate the epithelium okay then the epithelium is reprogrammed now basically the precursor cells of the normal epithelium you know it is reprogrammed to convert it to squamous metaplasia renal pelvis similarly just like any other example which which we just discussed chronic irritation often by renal stones kidney stones can lead to squamous metaplasia of the lining epithelium of the renal pelvis which was supposed to be transitional epithelium now it has become squamous epithelium, right? So these are the examples of squamous metaplasia. Now moving on to the example of columnar metaplasia. What is columnar metaplasia? The end result is conversion into columnar epithelium. The most common example which we say is Barrett's esophagus. This is a very classical example where the normal squamous epithelium of esophagus, esophagus you all know that it is lined by squamous epithelium, that is replaced by columnar epithelium. Why? Because of chronic acid reflux from the stomach. In people who have lower esophageal sphincter which is lax, what happens? The gastric content kind of refluxes into the esophagus. Okay? Now the esophageal, lower end of esophagus is irritated. Okay, and we know that the gastric epithelium is more resistant to digestion because the gastric epithelium secretes mucus, which forms a protective layer. And that is why what happens in the lower end of esophagus, the precursor cells says you now have to convert to an epithelium which can handle this acid reflux. So that's how there is conversion of normal squamous epithelium into columnar epithelium. Okay. But having said that, though this is a protective mechanism in, in beginning, but remember, once you see Barrett's esophagus, these individuals are at increased risk for development of adenocarcinoma of the esophagus. So, they have to be placed under regular follow-up. So, this is your column, uh, lower end of esophagus, which is lined by stratified squamous epithelium, and that is replaced by columnar epithelium with goblet cells in between okay so that is called as intestinal metaplasia okay so or columnar metaplasia healed gastric ulcer what happens here is in the case of you know in the process of healing of the gastric ulcer the regenerative process you know sometimes involve the replacement of normal gastric epithelium with intestinal type of columnar epithelium so that's also an example of columnar metaplasia which is again Normally, you should not find goblet cells in the stomach, right? So, if you find goblet cells in the stomach, then it is called as intestinal metaplasia. 
okay which means you have intestinal type epi type of epithelium what is intestinal type of epithelium it contains columnar epithelium along with goblet cells right so basically it is a response to the inflammatory healing process so let's move on to understand the mesenchymal metaplasia first one is osseous metaplasia example given i mean uh, is the arterial wall showing uh, osseous metaplasia it's also referred to as monkeberg's medial sclerosis also referred to as medial calcific sclerosis or monkeberg's arteriosclerosis what is this this is actually calcification of the tunica media of mainly the muscular arteries can you make out this basophilic material in the tunica media that is your calcified area hmm? osseous metaplasia of the smooth muscle of the tunica media okay what has happened here is the tube the smooth muscle cells transform okay into osteoblast like cells which lay down a matrix and thus can become calcified which can sometimes resemble bone okay it is usually associated with aging and diabetes or even chronic kidney diseases this is an illustration showing you know the tunica media showing calcification within the tunica media what is important to note that you know monkeberg medial sclerosis is not of much significance because unlike your atherosclerosis monkeberg's medial sclerosis do not cause luminal narrowing okay whereas in atherosclerosis it can cause obstruction right so monkeberg's medial sclerosis is not of that much significance second one is osseous metaplasia example of uh, myositis ossificans as it names as the name says it is myositis inflammation of the muscle finally leading on to ossification so this is a radiological image showing this is a vastus lateralis lateralis showing you know bone like deposition within the muscle that's your normal bone right so this is bone like this is the same in a uh, radiological list image showing bony deposition in the muscle following a muscle injury or inflammation the muscle tissue can begin to transform into a bone okay that's myositis ossificans usually it occurs as a response to severe or repeated trauma and can lead to significant functional impairment why because of the stiffness it causes another example for osseous metaplasia is stromas of tumor sometimes you know within the stroma of various tumors there can be bony transformation or osseous metaplasia normally also as individuals age you know the cartilage within the larynx can sometime undergo ossification so this is a normal part of aging that's example of osseous metaplasia in the cartilage of larynx cartilaginous metaplasia the last example for today is cartilaginous metaplasia example being during the process of healing of fractures what happens there is formation of cartilaginous callus and that is a temporary bridge between the broken ends so that's the cartilaginous metaplasia so this is a part of normal fracture healing where mesenchymal stem cells differentiate into chondrocytes and these chondrocytes produce cartilage right so finally later it will be replaced by bone that's what we call it as endochondral ossification so before it being replaced by bone there will be cartilaginous metaplasia so what did we learn dear students we learned what metaplasia is why metaplasia occurs because of reprogramming of the precursor cells and then we saw types of metaplasia into epithelial and mesenchymal squamous and columnar in epithelial osseous and cartilaginous in mesenchymal so finally i'll tell you metaplasia is actually the body's way of way of saying let me adjust so i can keep going thank you for watching if you have liked this video please click on that like button do comment if you have any queries to ask or if you want me to cover on different topics kindly comment in the comment section below and then do not forget to subscribe if you like this video and the channel and please do share thank you